in this month's right here with your homework from chapter 9, lesson 12, page 687 and 688. We got eight problems to do. All right, so first thing we're going to do, we're subtract mixed numbers. All right, so mixed number, right, it has a, a whole number and a fraction together. I could write my mixed number like this, 8 plus 1 half. Right? Just like I could write 22. 20 plus 2. But instead it's just easier to write 22. It's easier to write 8 and 1 half. So we need to add 8 and 1 half. Sorry, we need to take away 3 and 1 sixteenths from 8 and 1 half. I can't do this. I have mixed matched denominators. But I can estimate first just to see what my answer would be. 8 and a half is going to round up to 9 because I have a half. Right, when I get to one half, I round up. If I'm at half, less than a half, I round down. Just like in the other, in whole numbers, right? When we got to five, we rounded up. Four, three, two, one, I round down. So my three and one sixth, right? This is very, very small. One sixth of something. It's very small. It's a unit fraction. So whenever I have a unit fraction, unless it's one half, I'm going to round down. So we rounded down to three. 9 take away 3 is 6. That's my estimate. So first, I'm going to change my denominator here. I'm going to change it. Sorry, I'm going to change one of them, right? I'm going to change my 2 to a 6. So my 8 and 1 half, I'm going to change it to 8 and something sixths. So I take my 2 and I multiply it by 3 to get 6. So whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So the top, I also multiply by 3. 1 times 3 is 3. Now I have 8 and 3 sixths. Now I can subtract, right? It's kind of like similar when we have to borrow in math or subtraction, right? I need to make my numbers be able to work together. So here's 8 and 1 half turns into 8 and 3 sixths. 3 and 1 six, six stays 3 and 1 sixths. Notice they put the negative sign with the number. So we know we're subtracting this number from that number. All right, so here I had 8 and, one six, eight and 1 half, take away 3 and 1 six, is equal to 5 and 2 six, or 5 and 1 third. So right, all I did is I took away my 8 from my 3. Boop, I got 5. Here, this is 3 sixths now, right? I changed it. I did an equivalent fraction. Now this is going to be 3 six, 3, I do 6, 6, 6. 3 take away 1 is 2, so I have 5 and 2, 6, which can get smaller, right? I divide by 2, I divide by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Final answer, 5 and 1 third. Is 5 and 1 third close to 6? Well, 5 and 1 half would be closer to 6, but eh, it's close enough. My dad used to like to say, it's close enough for government work. Not that we're doing government work, but all right. 6, take away 2, right? This one I can just straight across subtract. Oh, it does say to estimate first, then subtract and write the difference in simplest forms. So 6 and 5 eighths, 4 eighths would be 1 half. So I'm going to say this is closer to 7. 2 and 3 eighths, 4 eighths is 1 half again, right? So this is closer to one, to 0. So I'm going to say leave this a 2. So I'm going to say 7, take away 2 is 5. Now I'm going to do my real math. 6 take away 2 is 4. I know my denominator of my fraction is going to be 8, right? 8, 8, 8. 5 take away 3 is 5. And right, 5 eighths, I would round that up, so I would turn this into a 5. So this is about 5, and it works. That was a good estimate. estimate. All right, so here, my next problem. I have to change these, right? They have a 4, a 3, and a 4 on the bottom. One way to change them is just to multiply them times each other to figure out my common denominator. 4 times 3 is 12, which in this case does work both ways. So I'm going to find first my, my estimate. 9 and 3 fourths is closer to 10. Where can I write it? And I'm going to take away 1 and 1 third, right? There's my unit fraction, and it's not 1 half. So I'm going to say this is going to be closer to 0. So we're going to take this as 1. 10 take away 1 is 9. Now I'm going to, for real, subtract. Well, first I'm going to convert my numbers. So 3 fourths, I'm going to make a 12 and a 12. So I multiplied here times 4 times 3. I have to multiply my top times 3, 9. 
I multiply here times 4, I have to multiply my numerator by 4. 1 times 4 is 4. Now I can subtract. 9 take away 1 is 8. I know my fraction is going to have a 12th on the bottom. 9 take away 4 is 5. 5 twelfths cannot simplify, so that is my final answer. 8 and 5 twelfths. So 6 twelfths would be my half, where I would round up to 9. Here, I would round this to 8. Is 8 about 9? Eh, that's about. 8 and 5 halves, twelfths is even closer to 9. Sorry, I should have written the 5 twelfths in there. All right, now I'm going to do this problem. First, I'm going to estimate. 4 and 5, 6. It's almost 6, 6, so it's almost 5. And I'm going to take away 4 and 1 third. Oh, that third, I'm going to just get rid of it and turn this into a 4. So my answer should be about 1. So let's do real, sorry, first let's convert. Right, this is one of those weird ones. If I took 6 times 3, I'd have 18, which would work. That is a common denominator for these two. And then I could reduce it. But I don't need to do that, right? This one is a 6 already, and I could change this 3 into a 6 by multiplying times 2. So I multiply times 2. 2, 6. This one's still going to be 5, 6. I didn't even need to rewrite it. 4 take away 4 is 0. You can write a 0 if you want to, but we don't need to. 6, 6, 6. 5 take away 2 is 3. So now I need to write it in simpler forms. 3 divides by 3, and 6 divides by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 1 half. And I do round 1 half up to 1. 1 half is about 1. All right, on to the back. If I went too fast, just pause it. Mrs. Gable bought 7 and 5 six gallons of punch for the class party. The students drank four and a half gallons of punch. How much punch was left at the end of the party? Right in simplest form. Right, we did another one about juice and gallons and punch. I think it was lemonade and punch. We had to add them together. So now we're subtracting, right? They had this much punch that she bought and they drank this much. How much was left over? So we're gonna have seven and five, six is how much she bought. They drank four and one half gallons and how much is left over? So let's mosey on over here to do our math. Right, this five six, I can leave it. This one half, I'm gonna have to change into a number that has a denominator of six. But it's gonna be the same number. So this is two times three. Whatever I do to the bottom, I will do to the top. And three out of six. So now, instead of seven and five six, take away four and one half, I'm gonna take away four and three six. You could write it right here if you want to. I'm just going to leave it over there and try and remember it. 7 take away 4 is 3. I know my denominator is 6, 6, 6. My numerator is going to be 5. Not take away 1. It's going to be 5 take away 3. Hmm, look at that. 3, 6 is equal to 1 half. Right, I can just leave, I can use my number I already figured out. 3 6 is the same as 1 half. This is its simplest form. So 3 and 1 half gallons of punch were left after the end of the party. Oh, look, Bella. Bella is 10 and 5 twelfths years old. Right, do you know you guys can measure your age always by how many months? Right, we have uh, Ulysses' birthday is coming up on Saturday. So, or, or we had a couple birthdays. Um, we had Angel and Jessica, right, in February. So now they're all going to be one twelfth. Next, this month in March, there are two twelfths. Then there'll be three twelfths until they get to the next number, which will be 11. This kid, Franco, is 12 and 7 twelfths years old, right? So whenever his birthday was, he's had been alive seven more months. His birthday was seven months ago. What is the difference in their ages? Right in simplest form, right? I measure age like this, but we don't really, right? We just count. You don't get to be the next until you turn 11. But look, you can count your fractions of the year. Right now, for myself, I am just 51. I'm not even one half because or I'm not even one twelfth. All right, so we're gonna see how much older Franco is than Bella. 
So we'll have 12 and 7 twelfths. Take away 10 and 5 twelfths is going to be equal to 12 12. I can do that, right? So I'm going to say 12. Take away 10 is 2. I'm going to start with my fraction there. 7 take away 5 is 2. So even though this is 2 twelfths and we're counting months, I'm still going to reduce it. So I'm going to divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, which I will get, still count my 2, 2 divided by one, 2 is 1, 12 divided by 2 is 6, so 2 and 1 6 years older, I can put older, Franco is 2 and 1 6 years older, right, 2 twelfths. In one week, the fifth grade class recycled nine and two thirds pounds of glass and 12 and three quarters pounds of newspaper. How many more pounds of newspaper than glass did the class recycle? Right, they collected more glass than newspaper, so I wanna know the difference. So I'm gonna take the 12 and three fourths and I'm gonna subtract the nine and two thirds and see what we get. I got a four and a three. So I'm going to convert my numbers first. I'm going to just keep going right here. So I'm going to say 12 and 3 fourths. I'm going to multiply times 3, multiply times 3, right? That's why I keep it nice and neat. 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 3 is 9. I'll write my subtraction. Now I'm going to carry my 9 over. But this 2 thirds, I'm also going to turn it into a 12. So I'll multiply times 4, times 4. 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, now I can subtract. 12 take away 9 is 3, I'll put my fraction line right there, 12, 12, 12, I subtract only the top numbers, 9 eighths, 9 take away 8 is 1. So right, but I have to tell them what I'm counting, 3 and 1, 12 fifth graders, classes, newspaper, glasses, right, I'm counting how many pounds, how much this weighs, so I'm going to just write pounds. I know you guys know this, but, right, I could abbreviate pounds like this, L-B-S, means pounds. Two more, a snack mix recipe calls for five and three-fourths cups of cereal and five and five-twelfths cups less of raisins. How many cups of raisins are needed, right, in simplest form? All right, so these are these weird problems. You wouldn't do this, but all right, we'll just pretend like we did. All right, so this is how much snack mix the recipe needs of cereal, right? This is how much cereal this recipe needs. So it needs raisins also. We don't know how much, but we know that this number is bigger than the amount that they need. It's this much more. This much more is how much more they need um, sorry, is how much le this, take away this, is the leftover is how much they need of raisins. Sorry, I don't know how to explain it well enough, I guess. So they need raisins. This isn't how much raisins they need. This is how much more there is of cereal than of raisins, right? There's less raisins. So I'm going to just take my five and three-fourths for my cereal and I'm gonna subtract three and five twelfths. Right, this is where I don't like it. I feel like they're trying to trick you on this problem, but this problem isn't just tricky, it's like, what? Why would anyone say it like that? We wouldn't, we wouldn't say it like this. We'd say, you need this much cereal and this much raisins, but we're practicing our math, so that's why they're asking us like this. I'm gonna convert my five and three fourths to something with a 12. So now I'll have five with a 12 in the denominator. So I multiply by 3, I multiply by 3, so 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12, I already have it there. Now I'm going to just move this number over, it already has a twelfths on the bottom, so I can just move it over, just so my math is nice and close together. Equals, so now I can subtract, 5 take away 3 is 2, right, I just subtract those like normal, normal numbers. Write my fraction line, 12 is the denominator, right? 12, 12, 12, and I have 9, take away 5 is 4. But hopefully you can see I need to make this simpler because 4 goes into 4 and 4 goes into 12, so we will divide by 4 equals 
2, 4 divided by 4 is 1, 12 divided by 4 is 3, 2 and third, 1 third what? Right, remember we can abbreviate cups with the C. What is the difference between the two weights? So you could see there's this calculator and then I don't know what this is, an MP3 player or something. This weighs four and one half ounces. This weighs less, only three and one eighth ounces. They want to know the difference. So the difference between two numbers is how much it would take this number to get to this number or this number to get to that number, right? This number to get to here, I need to subtract. From here to here, I need to add. So I'm going to do my, because I don't know what I would add to it to get this number. Right, I know what I'm going to subtract to get my answer. I'm going to take this number, take away this number, it'll be my answer. But now these numbers are going to be a fact family. I'm going to take away three and one. Oops, why did I do that? Sorry, three and one. All right, I'm going to turn my 2 into an 8. So now I'm going to have 4 and 4, 8. Right, I took the bottom times 4 and the top times 4. So now I have 4 and 4 8. Take away 3 and 1 8 equals 4 take away 3 is 1. Do my number line. I'll put my numerator 8 because it's 8, 8, 8. Sorry, eight, 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 eight. Sorry, just playing. Four take away one is three, one, and three eight ounces, right? We're weighing something. Ah, OZ is my abbreviation for ounces. I'm like, where did we see that? So now I have to go find the right answer over here. Boop, hopefully you see it. Done.